Well, this morning we sit in eager anticipation as we believe our new sails have arrived. Well, it looks like we've got the perfect morning. It's lovely and sunny and windless. I mean, look at me, it's T-shirts and it's 10 past eight in the morning. Um, so this is good. Um, we've got to get the sail off uh, and then prep and then we'll go and get the new sails uh, and put the main on first and then we'll do the jib once we've greased the uh, furler. First thing we're going to do is take the lazy jacks off. Untie the lazy jack lines off the packaway bag and then open the gate to let the sliders out and release the mainsail. Then untie the reefing pennants and finally release the outhaul to get the main off. It's got a wire outhaul on the end of that. Now the sail's detached, it's just a case of getting it off the boat and folding it up. Goodbye, old friend. Oh, well, look at me. I don't know how we're going to get it on here, but I've got I'm here. So, this bolt is going to go through there. And that's the captive bolt that keeps the tack clue in place. So, if I lift this up and put this in here. the wrong way round. So the biggest change in terms of the type of sail we've got here is this, this sail's fully battened. And so we've got these battened cars which need to go into the mast track. So that's the main up and down. Still got some things to do. And obviously we've got to put the Genoa up next. Uh, but we'll have brunch first. Um, but whilst we're waiting for that, let's go back in time. Modern cruising sails are tough. But after years have been softened in the UV light from the sun, stretched in stiff breezes and chafed in several places, they eventually can't hold their shape. And that means they can't provide drive for your boat. Confidence is probably losing at least a knot and a half, maybe more in certain conditions, because the sails don't set properly. Add to that, the bolt rope is torn out of the tack, and the four sails gone the same way, and our poor old rags are destined for recycling. So it's January, and our thoughts are turning to the new season, um, and so it's probably time to start uh, searching for a good sailmaker. As with most things these days, we start with a Google search, and we're not short of responses. My base criteria is that I want to find a supplier that makes their sales here in the UK. I'm nervous that whilst importing does hold advantages that economies of scale bring in terms of both price and quality, my overriding concern is if they don't fit, the turnaround time for a fix could take weeks off my season. So I created a list and researched as much as I could about where each seller had its manufacturing loft. I wanted to keep it local in case I needed assistance with measuring the boat and so I requested quotes from five different companies. One declined as they were so busy they couldn't guarantee delivery before the summer and then the quotes started rolling in. It sometimes amazes me what drives us to make purchase decisions. After initial uh, information exchange between me and one of the suppliers um, so that we kind of got established what it was that I needed. 
Um, he then sent me a quote for some super duper wow performance sales, which would have been amazing, but would nearly triple my budget. I didn't respond and he didn't chase. Uh, another company sent me uh, a quotation. It was a really good price, but there was no information around it. It could have been cotton bed sheets. So in the end, it wasn't about price at all. There was only one company that really wanted to speak to me, that made an effort to call me and chase me down and then talk about what it was that I wanted, understand it, quote for that, and then chase up afterwards to see if I was happy with the quote. And that was Crusader Sales. So the first measurement we're gonna to need to take uh, is from the bottom of the sail, which is really, in this case, where it's attached. Um, to the fourth face of the mast. Same place the jib would actually be attached in real life. Walk it back to there. Next important measurement is the height of the fore triangle, which basically means we are going to hoist the uh, the measuring tape up on the uh, fore halyard, but uh, not leaving the tape as the only way of getting the fore halyard down in case it snaps. So we've uh, just got a piece of string tied onto that to uh, allow us to get it down. Sailmakers need very specific measurements. And not all sailmakers use exactly the same terminology, so you do need to check the details with them. But for a Bermudan rig boat, there are usually four main measurements. For the foresail, there's the foot, or J. Then there's I, the height of the fore triangle. For the mainsail, the E, which is along the boom from the tack fitting to the outhaul. And finally P, which is the hoist length. Of course, if any of this measuring makes you nervous, and let's face it, a few millimetres error could ruin several thousand pounds worth of sails, it's best to get your sailmaker in to double check it. Of course, if you have a production boat, then these measurements will be in your owner's manual. In addition, the sailmakers have access to a database with that same information on it as well. But of course, if you don't know the detailed history of your boat, or if you do know that it's had its rig modified or replaced in any way, then you do need to double check that the measurements of your boat are the same as the published data. Which is the reason I was measuring confidence. It was just to cross check it against the owner's manual. Of course, your sailmaker won't leave anything to chance, and if they can't get to the boat to check things for themselves, they'll ask for a number of specific photographs. Again, with a non-modified production boat, they're just really double-checking their info. But if you have anything that doesn't cross-check, then that's when you really need an expert to come aboard with his tape measure. Obviously, the secret to a good butty is making sure you have the best possible ingredients. So where better to get your sausages than the Queen's own butcher? I think we'll settle for this caramelised onion chutney. So today it's the Royal Farm Sausage from the Windsor Farm Shop and we are DOA, that's duck, orange and apricot. So the fruitiness of the duck and the orange and the apricot will probably be complemented by some brown bread rolls and some Royal Farms caramelised onion chutney to keep the Royal Connection going. So the DOA is divine. Absolutely amazing. 10 out of 10. We're not exactly sure what happened to the footage of Shabina's verdict, but it was also a 10 out of 10. After our Platinum Jubilee brunch then, it was straight into greasing the furling gear before hoisting the new foresail. First, we lubricated both the bottom and top bearings of the halyard swivel. I then like to spray the luff groove with McLube sail coat to uh, make sure there's no stickiness when we're hoisting. And then it's the turn of the lower bearing assembly. The top cover has to come off to gain access to lubrication point A, and you'll need a Torx driver for this. Lube point B is easier to get to, uh, but lube points C and D require the bottom half of the drum to be removed. 
and I use this Unigel synthetic Teflon lubricant for the task. That done, and it's time to hoist the foresail. Finally then, we furl the sail away and we're ready to go sailing. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please like and subscribe and thanks for watching.